Hello everybody, this episode is on how to create cinematic images using the Lumetri color panel inside of Premiere Pro. Now first a couple little items here when you are trying to create cinematic images it kind of starts with the camera. If you have access to a DSLR or if you have access to a RED camera or something bigger and fancier then you're going to want to be kind of in control of the settings. If you're using a camera that uses raw footage like the RED camera you're going to be able to access the raw data and basically make sure the, the raw data is flat. Make sure it kind of starts out flat so you can have a lot of control over it. And what I mean by flat is we're talking about contrast. I'm going to go into my color panel here and show you what contrast means under my Lumetri scope we're going to go under our waveform here and under our waveform here what flat footage means is that the footage has not been really defined yet and if it hasn't been defined yet if it's not a baked in define if it's not a baked in definition then you're going to have a lot more control over your image and the red camera accesses the raw footage so you're going to be able to just access the log footage uh, from the log settings what's called the log settings from the red camera which is basically really flat uh, and look at this we've got our main uh, exposure level here under our waveform all within like 20 to a kind of an 80 range there and it's all kind of packed in here all in the middle which means it is a flat image. You can grab the contrast here and you can drag it up and notice how that spreads out further and you get more of a contrast image as a result and it's not as flat. Now if you're using a DSLR camera you're going to want to go into the settings you're going to want to go into the contrast settings of the camera before you actually start shooting and set them as flat as they will get because uh, DSLR cameras basically bake in the looks if you try to add contrast while you're shooting it's going to bake that in you're not going to have since it's compressed footage it it is basically permanent it removes a lot of color information and you're not going to be able to control the contrast as much because it's just like crushed that contrast into the shot and the saturation into the shot so you'll want to go in and kind of make your settings on your camera somewhat neutral on the saturation and on the contrast and on the sharpness as well and then you can adjust those as you go into post-production so as you look at these images here this is a shot on a red camera of access the kind of um, the log settings on the camera and these are very flat looking so that's a good start right there and now we can really control these and start creating more of a cinematic image and the difference between a kind of regular video-ish image and a cinematic image is really uh, the primary thing you're going to be adjusting is actually contrast and one little thing with contrast here let's look at our waveform monitor our waveform monitor this shows your dark levels which start at zero on the IRE scale and end at 100 which is where your highlights hit on the end of the IRE scale at zero IRE your details disappear in the darks. If you start bringing the image down where you're hitting the darks here at the bottom you're going to be basically crushing those details in the darks and you're losing detail. Now up here at 100 you're going to lose details in the highlights. Now when we talk about cinematic we're really talking about film because film has a very high dynamic range which means if you expose things properly it keeps your highlights down under kind of what would be the hundred range in the detail range and it keeps your darks above the, de the crushed detail range as well but it also has contrast now the definition of basically how film looks is film has contrast without destroying the details and that's very important to know because what you'll usually get is people uh, just trying to add contrast to the image and they will do this I'm going to go to my curves on my Lumetri color panel here. I'm going to grab my darks. I'm going to drag them down. And look how we're crushing the darks there. And now I'm going to grab my highlights and drag them up. We did create contrast here. I'm going to do that until I actually destroy the highlights there as well, just to kind of exaggerate to make a point. And they will create a contrast image. Now look how we spread that out. Contrast is basically means uh, the spread between the darkest levels and the highlights. As you spread those further apart, you get more contrast. And look at the image that we get. I'm going to turn this on and off. There's the before, there's after. We get contrast, but look like what we've done here. We've crushed the details in the darks. If things hit zero, your details disappear in the darks. There's no more detail here, and there's no more detail in your highlights. So with film, film can have that heavy contrast to it, but without destroying the details in the darks and the highlights. And you can do that on the curve over here. First of all, before we do that, before we get into the curve, I'm going to go to my basic correction here, and I'm going to bring my exposure down a little bit, because I know this is a little bit overexposed. I'm going to bring the exposure down on my, on my main exposure. And also, we're going to adjust temperature here. I'm going to make sure that my temperature is balanced. I'm going to go to my RGB Prayed, uncheck my Luma waveform here, and look at this image. We've got some highlights pushed off in the blue. We've got our reds are, are fairly suppressed, and the green channel is higher than the red, and the blue channel is higher than everything. So this is a very kind of cool look 
looking image because we've got more blue in it than we do red and more green in it than we do red as well. So those some basic adjustments can be first done here in your temperature and tint slider. I'm going to grab my temperature and I'm going to drag this over and see what we get as we bring the reds up. Notice that we're bringing the reds up there and the greens are actually falling down as well. We can grab this tint slider and adjust that as well if we need to and get this shot to where it looks more balanced. And now we have a fairly balanced shot here. I'm going to uncheck my basic correction here and kind of look at the before and after and it's warmed up a bit. Okay, so now let's talk about contrast here. So contrast, I'm going to go back to my waveform here. So I'm going to create a little bit of contrast here. And what I'm going to do is create an S-curve. So this is your dark point node right here, and this is your highlight point node right here. And as you bring things up to this point, they get brighter. As you bring things down to this point, they get darker. And in between, this is your mid-range here. So you got your darks, your kind of grays, and then up to your whites and highlights up here. So I'm going to actually click on my lower level here. I'm going to click maybe about like a one quarter of the way up and click and add a node here. I'm going to grab this and start dragging it down and notice it is starting to bring down the darks but notice it is not actually crushing the details it's not bringing that down to zero and crushing the details in fact if I want to I can lift that a little bit and bring that zero up a little bit so it's kind of around like five IR, five IRE but I'm going to bring this node down and bring down the darker region but now I'm going to grab something up here about maybe two-thirds of the way up along the highlights and bring the exposure up on the highlights and look what's happening on my waveform this is spreading out it is getting more contrast to the image. In fact, let's go into the effects controls and take a look at this. And I check mark it on and off and look at the huge difference from before and after. And we're starting to get more of a cinematic image. Now we can exaggerate this a little bit more if we want and grab and grab the darks and create a little bit more spread on the contrast here to exaggerate it if we want. And we start getting a little and we start getting more of a cinematic image as a result. And this is actually what they call an S-curve. This S-curve basically gives contrast without destroying the details and the darks and the highlights. And if you want to bring those highlights up and make them pop a little bit more, we can grab this highlight node and drag it over to the left and notice that those highlights are coming up here on our waveform and getting, getting more toward 100 and starting to peak a little bit, uh, which is fine if you want them to kind of pop a little bit. But I'm going to create a little bit more of a curve here. And there we go. So one other thing I want to do here is I notice her skin tone from the kind of moonlight coming through there is a little bit blue. So actually what we can do is we can go down under the color wheels here. Actually, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to kind of blue up the highlights just a little bit. And I actually want to warm up the shadows a little bit because I want to make it look like kind of moonlight's coming through here. So I'm going to go this three color wheel here. I'm going to grab my highlights. I'm going to drag those over and look at how that's kind of starting to add more of a bluish cast there from the, through the window. Let's go to the midtones and warm those up a little bit. And actually, since that light's kind of falling on her face, that's kind of making it look, and I'm going to warm up the shadows a little bit. That's making her face look a little bit more bluish by increasing those highlights. Um, so one other thing that we can do is we can go into the HSL secondary here, and we can do some secondary color correction on her skin tone. I'm going to hit my plus button here and select her skin tone. We've got uh, kind of the same skin tone on the legs. Let's grab that. And notice it is her skin tone is kind of in the bluish range there, but I'm going to click on this color gray and look at the skin tone there and see if we can kind of grab more off of her face, uh, mess with the saturation. And there we're starting to grab a little bit more of that skin tone with her face there and not so much of the window, so that's good. And what we want to do is kill a little bit of this blue here in this area on her skin especially. There we go. Now I'm starting to get more of her skin there. Right, there's a good range of skin. It's also grabbing some of the blues in the catch, but let's see what we get here. I'm going to go uh, uncheck my mask here, and I'm going to go down to this little color correction bar here, and I'm going to pull that up and see if that actually warms up. I'm going to exaggerate it so you can kind of see what's happening. Look how it, it is warming up this area here, and actually I'm going to denoise my mask a little bit, and then I'm going to blur it a little bit, soften it up to get some rid of that noise over there. But obviously this is way exaggerated, so I'm going to double click, reset it, and I'm just going to grab this. And uh, actually, instead of doing this, instead we could try this hue wheel here, but I'm going to try these just kind of color correction wheel, these color sliders down here. I'm going to grab this and drag it over to the warmer area. And look how that's just starting to warm up the skin there. And I don't have to take it too far over. I'm just double click to reset that. I'm going to grab this and just drag it and warm it up just a little bit to warm up her skin tone. There we go. Okay, so we're off to a good start here.
couple other things we can do to kind of make this a little bit more cinematic is we need to make it more dramatic. And a couple ways of doing that is we can go up to the Creative tab, and there's a couple things we can do here. We've got a Sharpen, Vibrance, and Saturation tool. We want to sharpen up the image a little bit. Like I said, if you've kind of killed the sharpening, the sharpen in your DSLR that you're using, I'm going to grab the Sharpen and drag it up a little ways here. I'm going to go exaggerated here so you can kind of see the difference. Let's pull it up to 100. And, uh, and as I kind of toggle that on and off, Let's go undo, back to zero, and redo. I can see that kind of sharpen up the pixels a little bit. And I'm seeing the edges of my pixels kind of being sharpened a little bit here. So, and you probably don't need to take it up to 100%. What I recommend doing with Premiere is actually um, exporting out the, a little, like a little portion of the clip and seeing how much sharpen you really need on a bigger monitor. I'm gonna grab the vibrance and grab that and turn it up to kind of make the, the colors a little bit more vibrant. And there we go. And you can even try messing with the saturation a little bit more and to kind of see what you get if you kind of add a little bit more saturation if you're trying to add kind of heavier color to it that helps as well now one other thing that they have under the creative tab is this look tab right here and if we go through these you'll find different looks that add kind of a finalized look to your clip and uh, these will come across as fairly extreme so once you find something that you like, you can double click on it and it will add that look to your image. And this comes across very contrasty. It's kind of killing the um, it's kind of killing the details down here. So you can grab the intensity slider and kind of back that off a little bit and add that kind of that final look. And then you can kind of adjust it here. Uh, do some minor adjustments here. Let's look at our kind of before and after what we've got so far. I'm going to go to my effect controls and check this mark and and check this off and take a look at the beginning. Holy crud, that's a big difference from beginning to end and we're starting to get a very cinematic look as a result. One other thing that I might do here is adding a vignette. I can go down to the vignette and I can add a little vignette around the edge just to kind of darken the edges and kind of bring the focus to the center there. You can change the roundness and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the feather completely off so I can kind of see what I'm doing with this and we can change the midpoint we can kind of bring this down we can change the roundness of this thing and change the shape of it and like I said this is not what it's going to look like right now I'm going to feather that off but right now I kind of want to bring the main focus right there and we're going to mess with the amount here to get it more dark and now I can grab the feather and just kind of soften it off a little bit and now you just want to make it subtle so it's not very noticeable let's, let's check mark this on and off before and after and look how dramatic that looks. Now one other thing you could do to this image as well is add a little bit of film grain. There are some filters out there that work really well to create film grain. One of those is the Gorilla Grain and you have to do kind of a composite with it and it works really well. Uh, otherwise you can use the noise filter inside of Premiere. It does okay, it does a good job, but there are, are other choices you can choose from and Gorilla Grain is one way to go. That's one I recommend. But I'm going to type in noise under my effects. I'm going to grab that noise and grab it and drop it to this clip here. And we're going to add maybe just about like 6% grain here to add just a little bit of noise to it and kind of try to simulate film grain. And that doesn't look like it's bringing up too much. Let me grab the noise. You can really see it kind of coming in there as we take it up, but I'm going to get it right down maybe around 10% and let's see what that gives us there. Let me go to zero. Let's turn that on and off. Look at the wall here. There's before and it kind of clears up the grain and afterwards and if we play through that right now when it plays back it's going to look really really crummy but what you have to actually export it out it's kind of doing a real-time render of it which doesn't do do too good of a job so i'd recommend exporting out the clip and looking at it and seeing how it really looks with a little bit of grain on it on a big screen before you actually apply that filter all the way let's go to the next shot and i'm going to kind of do the same thing to match this shot and then we'll export these things out and take a look at them so this kind of has the same issue. I'm going to go to the Lumetri scopes here. I'm going to look at my RGB monitor. We're going to warm this shot up a bit. I'm going to go to the warm here and kind of warm that shot up a little bit. And now I'm going to bring my exposure down. It's a little too overexposed. Uh, then I'm going to go to my curves tab and we're going to add a curve to this to give it some nice heavy contrast. I'm going to try to warm up the skin tone by going to the HSL. Uh, secondary here and selecting her face. Let's look at our key here and let's try to increase the amount that's going to grab her skin. That's grabbing a lot of that blue cast kind of on this side and that's the part that I want to warm up is that kind of blue hitting her face there. So we're going to denoise that a little bit and then blur that mask a little bit. Go back and now let's grab this warm slider, drag it over and look at it warm up the skin there. Let's warm it up a little bit. Now let's go to our creative tab going to sharpen that a bit, bring up the vibrance on it a little bit, and saturate it a little bit more as well, and kind of just add a lot of color to this. And now I'm going to add that same filter that I had on the previous one, right there, 
and we're going to bring the intensity down. Let's kind of look at our eyes here and make sure that our eyes aren't losing detail. We could bring that exposure up a teeny bit more. There we go. I'm going to increase the blues and the highlights. All right, now we want to make sure that, that matches as it cuts from one shot to the next here. Let's take a look at it as it cuts from this one shot to the next. That looks like it's working pretty well. I'm just going to warm up the shot a little bit more. Looks like it needs to be a little bit more warmed up. Now just go to our vignette. Add our vignette. And there we go. Let's add our noise filter to this. In fact, I'm just going to go to the previous clip, grab our noise filter, copy it, hold Control C and copy, go to our next clip, Control V and paste, paste it on there. And there we go. As we play through, it cuts from one shot to the next. And right now it doesn't look too good because, like I said, it's doing that real-time processing. You can render it inside the Premiere if you want to. Or what I really recommend is while you're finishing these things is just set an endpoint and outpoint on a couple clips and see how those shots look and make sure that they look good when they're exported out. I'm going to export these clips out. We'll kind of show them. Those are the tips there for making your shots look more cinematic. In fact, let's just show one more time the before and after. There's the before of our wide shot. And let's go to the medium shot, the close-up here, and look at the before and after as well. And look at the huge difference we've got there. All right, well, thanks for watching. I'm going to export this out, and the last thing I'll show here is the clip playing. Just to kind of show you, I will have it play the before and after so you can kind of see the difference of uh, both clips.